Okay, so we're on to the next part of the organ project in the Tango Towers private chapel we've had built. So, as the organ was taken out about 15, 18 years ago, uh, we end up with the building frame with the bellows sat on it. I'll have shown you these photos before, and as you know, the bellows we have started on that, and I've done the ribs. I'll show you those in a moment because we're going to start assembling those ribs onto the onto the well of the bellows. So what we've been able to do is to, I've, I've been the last nine weeks trying to get timber for the floor in here, and finally it's coming dribs and drabs. You know, 22 planks one week, wait five weeks. 15 planks another week, six planks another week. It goes on like that. And we've got them down, we've done the skirting board, so we're now we can get on with putting the organ together. So, one of the things I'll show you, uh, we've, I think we've shown all these pictures before. The, just to recap, the sound board, which is where the pipes live, looks like that when it's put on the building frame. So, that was taken from the top, and that's, so you can imagine all the organ pipes in rows, and those rows, when it comes to organ pipes, are called ranks. They're like in ranks, like they are soldiers. So you then have slides, you then have upper boards, you then have the pipes. So we'll come to that much, much later, probably nine months later. So what we've managed to do is we've got to a stage where we've put the building frame together. Just before we go over that, I'll just show you the ribs. So the ribs are lurking against that wall look like they're ready to be shot. And as you see, we've not tidied the edges up because when I put those together and we put the gussets in, I'll trip, trim those exactly how I want them later on. So there's eight ribs. So they've been done, they've been taped and leathered to both sides. So here's the building frame. You'll see that the um, tenons are gaping. There are no um, coach bolts in what we've done so far. We've managed to find the parts, we've managed to put them together, and that's how it's going to stay. That lower section, which we showed you on the photo, you've got the bellows sitting on that frame, which is on the right, and there's a corresponding one on the left, which you can't see because the first post is in the way. So there are another couple of, um, horizontal uh, pieces that go in. Again, you can see on the photo there are. Um, that upper one could go in, probably. But what I want to have, because the bellows weighs about 800 weight, I want to make it really easy for us to kind of put that into position without clunking our heads and bending under things. So when we put the bellows in, I'll make sure the coach bolts are in for everything else, but I'll take that front one out. Um, that's just there for, for now and for painting. Now, there's one or two things I don't like about this, and we're going to deal with it. If I was an amateur and we bought a redundant organ from a church, I presume we'd take it apart and we'd put it back together again, hopefully, and probably clean the dirt off it, and that would be it. But as a professional organ builder, what I've got to do, I've got to put a lot of thought into this for a start. This is its fourth installation since it was built in 1864. And although it stayed in the same ownership, its first installation in a chapel in 1864, and then they expanded into a different building, so the organ moved with them, um, and then subsequently it went to the building we took it out of, which was at Louth, um, Union Chapel across from Morrison's these days um, and it was there for a hundred years something like 1911 1913 I've actually got the notes over there so I could tell you really one or two modifications happened some of them were going to reverse and some of them we're not going to reverse but one of the things I'm not happy about is that the building frame was repainted which is fine but to me it was a bit slapdash and I know you don't see it but to me it's not right. Now this is take two. You'll never see take one because you know what? How long have I had camcorders? Well, I've had video cameras into black and white recorders since 1978. So you know, I know where to press the record button and where to not press the record button. And yesterday, when I started editing this video, I discovered that I'd pressed record when I didn't want it to record and stopped when I wanted it to record. 
So you got absolutely nothing of anything, which was absolutely pointless. And I can't now revisit one of the things I wanted to show you because I've already done it. So we're going to go over to what I've done. So on top of this post, we've got this piece of wood and I'll just take the screws back out of it because I only just pushed them in uh, loosely. There's a lot of rust screws on this job because it was a very damp environment. That seemed better than I thought. I'm going to have to get a screwdriver. Yeah, I know it's the wrong screwdriver. It's a push-in screw as well. So what we've got here is a piece of wood with a pulley in it. There's a wooden pulley on a pin and normally we'd take that out, we'd grease the, uh, the pin, put it all back together, Bob's your uncle, and put it back. Now this, yesterday when I did the first take of this, was painted black. This slap dashed painted this black as well. You don't do that, it's not good. Now this doesn't do anything anymore. When this organ was hand pumped, there would be a, a cord going to the bellows top and as that rose, as the bellows top rose with the wind in the organ, there'd be, the cord would have a lead weight on the end of it and it would go up and down correspondingly to the, uh, where the bellows was. And that would be a telltale for the person pumping the organ by hand to know when the bellows was full and when it needed more air into it. You know, it's had a blower on it since 1950 um, and that isn't going to do anything. But nevertheless, I'm not going to take it off because in 75 years time, perhaps somebody else will be still installing this organ in, in somewhere else. So I want that to go back in. I, I, it was painted black and I've cleaned the paint off with methylated spirits. So if I go over to the right, we've got a piece of timber on the building frame there on the right. And that's how it should be. You've got the building frame painted black and you've got no paint on that timber. That's, that's, why, that's what that should have been, the other one. Then at the front here, this has happened again. So we've got a piece of timber which holds the composition trundle frame into position. There's a mechanical memory system which um, has preset stop selections for the bottom keyboard. Um, pretty pointless to be honest on an organ with five stops, but nevertheless it's there. And without boring you, uh, the, these mechanical memories were invented in the 1400s, so uh, this organ may be 1864, but there you go. So this needs unscrewing and this black paint needs to come off it. Now further down the organ, this is where I say we've got to put some thought into this. We've got a square. It's as stiff as anything because it needs the pin to come out, needs to be greased, centers need to be checked. And this is a blacksmith made kind of thing. There's a piece of felt there to stop it banging. We'll be replacing that, of course, because that's got some. There's our repeater over the tannoy system. Um, so that's a piece. Again, it's got bits of paint on it. We'll take that out, we'll sort the square out. So these are all these little remedial things that need doing. We'll then paint the building frame. And then we'll screw it together. And what else was I gonna tell you? Oh yeah, so what this is is part of the swell pedal. So to change the volume of how the organ plays, the top keyboard on, on most two annual organs in, in the UK is called the swell organ. So your bottom keyboard is the grate, the top keyboard is the swell. The swell is a wooden box like a garden shed with shutters on the front like Venetian blinds, except the Venetians copied organs to invent their blinds, not the other way around. And by opening and closing those shutters, you can make the organ louder or quieter from that keyboard. And what that does is operate some of the mechanism, the mechanical mechanism to make those shutters happen. Now, when this organ was built, by Forster and Andrews in 1864, it would be what we call a ratchet swell pedal. So at the right hand side of the pedal board would have been a pedal which you could lock in closed or open position and the swell shutters would thus be open or closed. But then the French idea of having a central um, swell pedal 
which you see on electronic organs and pipe organs these days, came in. Now because this or the organ went back to the factory somewhere around 1913, uh, for its rebuild to go into its previous installation at Louth, because it was factory modified, I'm going to let they, some of these modifications stay put. So the central swell pedal was installed, so it's wrong for the era, but it's a factory modification from 1914, 13, whenever. The pedal board would have been 25 note. I think it's now 29 note. I don't think it's 30. The UK standard for organ pedal board is 30. Bottom C, middle F. But this, I think, only goes to E. Uh, the United States standard is 32 uh, pedals. So, some of these modifications, I'm not going to put it back to a 25 note pedal board, and I'm not going to put it back to the ratchet swell pedal, but what we are going to do is one of the ranks of pipes on the bottom keyboard has been swapped from what should be a 15th at 2 foot pitch to a dulciana at 8 foot pitch, and I think with its limited specification, with four stops on the top keyboard and, uh, and is it five on the bottom keyboard, I just think that the church felt there was nothing quiet. Um, you know, I just think that way. But there are ways of playing the top keyboard quietly with it being able to be closed off with um, uh, the swell shutters. It has a 16 foot board on in the swell I think if you played that an octave higher, it would sound like an eight-foot flute. So there may be ways of getting away with it. But anyway, I'll be having a brand new 15th manufactured exactly the correct um, specification for this organ from the part makers at Leeds. So that is the preamble to that. So I think what we're going to do, I'm going to just show you why we haven't bolted the building frame together. I'm going to go over to the storage department where this organ, the rest of it's currently in store. So we're currently in one of the storage facilities here and why don't I put the lights on? Well I'm not putting the lights on because the circuit breaker has popped. The circuit breaker is in the fuse box on the exceedingly left part of this building and guess what? There's several tons of organ in the way. So for the last 15 years, when the circuit paper breaker popped because I did something stupid, um, there's not been any lights in here, so we have to come in with torches from time to time. So we've actually moved quite a lot of the organ out of here, and some of it you've just seen assembled. The sound boards, which are going to go uh, across the uh, building frame when we've put that together, uh, they're both actually there. Our chairs are just stacked in front of it at the moment. If we go over here, I'm just going to kind of change angle and squeeze myself uh, into uh, a position where we can see where the job screws are. My assistant Andy pointed them out to me yesterday, he's thinner than me. There are, if you can see in the dark, some storage tubs there with parts coming out and down there, which I don't think we can see in this light, is a biscuit tin. So when Andy can get to that biscuit tin, which I think will be tomorrow, We'll, we'll have taken some more of this, these parts out and once he gets into that biscuit tin we will have those coach bolts to put that building frame together. So as you can imagine that's been a bit of a swine to get the screws to move uh, having been there a um, hundred and something years. So I've got these started. The ones which have had paint in them were difficult and uh, the one which didn't have paint in it wasn't so difficult. Organ building practice is such that you normally will put screws in with grease and that does help. But as I said, this organ was a very damp environment when we bought it. So we're going to pop these screws out. They look like number 12s and number 14s. They're number 14s, aren't they? Okay. You can see it's had some rather rough and ready modifications sometimes, but yeah, this is sometimes how organs are. I don't need to change what's behind. But what we're going to do is we're going to overhaul these screws. Uh, on organs in the UK we are expected to be using slotted screws. So it's better to overhaul these than to be putting new screws in. Uh, I think if I was doing this in a church and I put Phillips tile or posi posi drive screws in, 
I think the job would be rejected. So it, it, it's quite a difficulty because they're hard to come by. So we're going to overhaul these. And it's just a matter of filing them up. I'll take this camera over to the organ workshop. You might find it hard to believe that people like me go to the trouble of doing this. I'll just get the angle right because the camera's in the way. So I want to do it with the grain of the slot. Especially if we can actually tighten the vise enough. Because I tell you what, you're not going to get screws even if you could get them easily. You are not going to get them of this Victorian quality. This scraping is going through my teeth. Every screw in the organ has to have this treatment. So now I need to run a hacksaw through them. And then we're going to go over to the linishing wheel. Oh, we're hearing the repeater and the tannoy system in here now. Guess how many thousand screws are on these organs? Okay. really handy it needs tightening up it would do wouldn't it I'll get Mr Chippy to do that later anyway that'll do for now So the next piece I've taken off from the bottom right hand leg is this. The screw which was holding it was body bound and in taking it out it's broken. So we've got a new two and a half inch 12 which hopefully is the right one. But once again this needs cleaning up. It's not so much it's got paint on it this time, it's just, uh, it's just a bit mucky. When you're taking an organ out of a church, there isn't always the time to get all these screws out. So you've got to do it back at the workshop. And of course, this is what we're using as a workshop, isn't it, at the moment? I'll just put some bands on there.
they'll probably be filled with grease. Just run over those. gone a bit too far we're going to need to put some uh, stain on that um, which is in the next building so again I'll put this temporarily back so we know where it goes taking this cross rail out with this square we can overhaul this with um, with it fitted on here but I would like to get these screws out clean them up regrease them put them back may not be possible we'll see so the best way to try and get these out, I've applied some oil because I think they're going to be body bound with rust. We've got a right size screwdriver, this has got a hole in it, we're going to use another screwdriver as a tommy bar. And believe it or not, the best course of action is to try and tighten them. So here goes, trying to tighten. I won't be surprised if the head doesn't snap off. And now we'll try and untighten it. Now he's moving, that doesn't mean it's going to come out. But I think it is really coming out. Now let's try the other one. Try and tighten that. Managed not to snap the screwdriver, managed to see if we can untighten that one. much effect. See if we can with the cold chisel. Once again try and tighten it. And once again try and take it out. I'd hate to have to saw these out. At least we've got one. I don't think that's moved. Anyway, we'll get this one out. We might be able to wiggle the other one a bit. Hundred and fifty plus years in a damp environment isn't easy. So about number 16. <laughs> Let's just see whether we can move this, it's probably body bound. But with it being all beautifully let in, it doesn't give us any latitude to wiggle it about. Now we'll off camera see what I can do. So what we have here is a 17 tube, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17 tube pneumatic block. So the bottom box will be 12, that's 12 plus uh, 17 is 29. I think there's 30 pedals, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, that's a 17 tube pneumatic block. And the idea is it splits in two so that half of it stays with the organ and half of it can be removed with the chest if it needs to go in for maintenance or for taking the organ out. But we just had to pull all the tubes out because we couldn't shift the screws. So I've taken it away from the building frame. There was one C screw. I've done that successfully. I've also taken these two screws out uh, in the vise. Well, as far as getting them started, I have. So there we go. So that splits 
and there's a leather gasket between the two. So that's all straightforward, that's all very nice. And these all took out fine. So we're just gonna run the belt sander over those, make them nice, ready to put the tubes back in in a, in a lot of months time. But this side, because some of the tubes broke off in getting them out, these would have been put in with Chatterson's compound at the time, which is something we don't seem to be able to get these days. I'm gonna to have to drill these out. But on this um, left hand back post, it's some damage, it's been dragged away from the building or whatever at some point. Now it's not necessarily damage that we did taking it out, perhaps it, it was taken on another occasion. Is it, uh, it's pretty dirty, so what we're going to do is to glue and screw that. It doesn't matter, but it does matter to me. So hopefully we'll get the drill bit. That's going to be about, we're going to put this screw in. I could just glue in and clamp it. On the other hand, we'll see whether we can do it this way. When I did my apprenticeship, we weren't allowed to use power tools. Imagine we didn't have any power tools, it was too tight to find it. So I'm going to put a screw in just there. They don't want to be body bound ever, so they need to be the right hole. Just check that it isn't body bound. It is body bound. So we'll go up a size. Then me telling you one thing and doing something else. This battery is about to go flat in the uh, camcorder. That's not body bound. And the, then just take that drill out, put a countersink bit in. This is why we have so many cordless drills, except only ones in here at present. So that's now countersunk. So what we want is the glue. We're using Evo stick PVA. This is where we're not gonna be traditional because I want this to be strong and to work. So that's now nicely in that joint. Put some grease on the screw in the usual organ building tradition and put that screw in. Normally we'd do a, a, a small pilot hole further, but I don't think we need to this time. vacuum cleaner on that and then uh, that will be all ready for Andrew to paint tomorrow so we'll conclude with a one overall view so in conclusion we've spent about six hours today uh, showing you what I've uh, been doing and it makes absolutely no difference does it we haven't put any more organ together but what we have done is what's here has been overhauled so next time we'll probably be working on the bellows and um, I'll get Andrew to paint this tomorrow and then we can pop all those little parts back on. So probably be a couple of, of weeks doing the, finishing the bellows off and then we'll plonk that in and then we'll be having to put a blower to it. So there you go from Tango Towers Chapel. Thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying the putting back together the restoration work on this 1864 Forster and Andrews pipe organ.